Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bowls. It's taken me a little while to get round to it, but we've got another Genetics I Didn't Know That Part 2 video. And this time we'll be looking and explaining the difference between co-dominant and incomplete dominant. Let's take a look. I think the best way to illustrate the difference between co-dominance and incomplete dominance is to look at flowers. And in the co-dominant case, if we breed a red flower to a white flower, we end up with a flower that is both red and white. Neither gene is dominating the other. They are co-dominant. We get a flower that exhibits red characteristics over half the flower and white characteristics over the other half of the flower. You will notice that the flowers are diploid just as in our snake. So the red flower is capital R, capital R, and the white flower is small r, small r. So effectively, the red flower is the super form of red. The white flower is the normal state and carries none of the red genetic mutations at that locus on its DNA strand, so that would be equivalent to the normal wild type. You will notice that breeding the super form of red to the normal wild type gives us the heterozygous form, capital R, small r, in all the offspring. You will notice that both genes are equally displayed visually in the offspring. Neither gene is dominant over the other, and both are visible. They are co-dominant. In contrast, in incomplete dominance, when we breed the superform red flower, capital R, capital R, to the normal wild type, small r, small r, we end up with a halfway house. The het form, capital R, small r, is pink. It is a halfway house between the superform red and the original wild type. Clearly, red is dominant over white, but the expression in het form is not the full visual expression of the red flower. It's a halfway house. It's pink. The whole flower is pink. It is not 50% red and 50% white, as in the co-dominant situation. Only in the homozygous form or superform do we get the full visual expression of red. The gene is dominant, but in heterozygous form it is incomplete. Only the superform gives the complete visual expression. So here we summarize that. Red is the superform, bred to white, which is the normal, and in incomplete dominance we get a halfway house. Everything is pink, and the full visual expression of red is not expressed unless we get the homozygous or superform. Red is clearly dominant over white, but in heterozygous form is incomplete. In contrast, co-dominant the superform red flower, bred to a white flower, will result in offspring which are 50-50. Neither gene dominates the other, and in heterozygous form, both genes are equally visible, and we get a flower which is half and half, half red, half white. The normal or unmodified wild type state still shows through in the offspring. So, how does that work in our snakes? This is the super form of yellow belly. This is an ivory and it's a white snake. This little guy here is our normal or wild type. So we've got one super form and one normal wild type. And if we breed them together, what do the offspring look like? Are the offspring going to be half white and half normal, as they would be if yellow belly was a co-dominant gene, or are we going to get a halfway house, which is a completely new pattern snake, but not 
the full visual expression of yellow belly in its super form which would be an ivory. So let's have a look at what we get when we breed a normal to an ivory. So when we breed this white snake to a normal we actually get a yellow belly. It is not half white and half normal. It's a completely new phenotype or completely new visual expression and all the snake is covered in the same pattern. It differs from a normal by having all this fantastic blushing up the sides. It differs from a normal in reacting differently when we mix it with other genes. So yellow belly in its super form gives us an ivory bred to a normal gives us a yellow belly. This is an incomplete dominant gene. When we breed the super form to a normal we get a halfway house. We get a pink flower not a flower which is red and white. Let's take another very common example. This is a super pastel, the homozygous form of pastel. You can see that it's quite faded, the head is quite white. So this is the homozygous or super form of pastel. There are two copies of pastel at the locus. Both alleles are the pastel mutation. What happens if we breed a super pastel to our normal? Do we get a snake which is 50% this pattern and 50% this pattern or do we get the halfway house? Is pastel co-dominant or is it incomplete dominant? Okay so we breed our super pastel to a normal and we get a pastel, a single gene heterozygous pastel. It is not the full phenotype of super pastel, it is not half normal and half super pastel, it is a halfway house. Pastel is clearly distinguishable from the normal, it is also clearly distinguishable from the super pastel. So pastel is an incomplete dominant gene. Allow me to illustrate that again with a slightly younger snake so you can see better. Super pastel, very very bright and a super blushed out head. So this is the homozygous or super form of pastel. Here is our normal and when we mix these two together we get a halfway house. We do not get a snake which looks like 50% this and 50% this, we get the halfway house. The heterozygous form of pastel gives a snake which is one pattern but is different to the super form and different to the normal wild type. So pastel is clearly dominant over the normal because when we get a copy of pastel we can see the difference but it's incomplete because the super form is different again. All three snakes carry one pattern or one phenotype. They are not the red and white rows. This guy is the equivalent of our pink rose. It's the halfway house. Alright guys, so there you have it. In our ball python world, all of the genes that we work with are either dominant, recessive or incomplete dominant. There are no co-dominant genes that we know of in the ball python industry. So please stop calling them codons. They are not. They are incomplete dominants. Now I will say that there is one gene that I have looked at that might partially qualify and that's scaleless. In het form the scaleless is a scaleless head. It does look like a normal patterned snake but on certain parts of the body scales are missing. So we could say that that 
scaleless appearance of a part of the snake is actually co-dominant with the normal form. However, scaleless ball pythons are also changed in pattern and we do not get the full phenotype of a scaleless ball python in het form. So I'm more inclined to think that scaleless ball pythons are actually still an incomplete dominant gene. So, in our ball python world, dominant, incomplete dominant, and recessive. No more co-dominant, please. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.